Hey, Rotary Swing Golfers, welcome back. I'm your instructor, Chris Tyler. And today we're gonna to be discussing one of the most important parts of downswing transition, and that is weight transfer. I'm gonna be showing you what some of the common faults that you may be struggling with in your own golf swing. And more importantly, I'm gonna be giving you a detailed list of checkpoints that you're gonna to start to look for when starting to refine your downswing and your weight transfer. So if you've been battling with weight transfer, pay close attention to today's video. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so in part one of this video, I think it's extremely important for all of us to have a clear understanding of where we're trying to go in our downswing first, so that we have a good visualization of what we're gonna be trying to achieve. And that's, I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate an impact position so, and give you a few checkpoints of what you're gonna be looking for when you start to work through these drills at the end of the video. So let me go ahead and impact this bag here. I'm gonna hit it lightly. So here are my checkpoints for you. Okay, forget about the hands and the arms at this point, forget about the lead wrist, we're just gonna be looking at the body lines for now. What I want you to focus on is making sure that number one, you have 80% of your weight in your lead leg underneath your lead ankle, lead heel area. So 80% of my weight is gonna be right in underneath my lead heel, lead ankle. 20% of my weight is gonna be over on my trail foot. Okay, so 20% of my weight is gonna be into this right side with the foot rolled in, no heel up off the ground. Okay, so we wanna have 20% of our weight heeled down. You can see that my, my heel is rolled in here. So your first checkpoint, 80%, 20%. Second checkpoint is your hips should be open about 35 to 45 degrees. Okay, so from down the line, hips should be open about 35 to 45 degrees. Your shoulder line should be square. So when I shift over, I got 80%, 20%, hips open about 35 to 45 degrees, my shoulders are square. So down the line, what that looks like, Our head should still be in behind the golf ball. So when I hit this impact bag, you could probably see that my head stayed back there. Now, the final most critical checkpoint of it all that's gonna really dictate a lot of the faults that you probably have in your golf swing is the position of the lead side of the body. So when we're at impact here, we wanna have our lead shoulder, our lead hip socket, our lead knee, and our lead ankle all stacked right on top of each other. Okay, this is what we would call neutral joint alignment. This is a perfect impact position. This is gonna allow you to control the bottom of the swing arc and get the club to bottom out in the same spot every single time, which is really critical for consistent ball striking. Okay, so now in part two of this video, I wanna go ahead and discuss some of the common faults. And one of the biggest faults that we see is when people start to work on shifting their weight. Okay, that's the operative word is we're gonna shift our weight over to our lead side. We're gonna use our legs. What we typically see, okay, so I'm gonna get the club out of here for this so I can demonstrate it properly. Is when you load into your right side, we see people just shifting their pelvis and keeping their upper body back. Now, we would all agree that when we load into our right side, we shift and we turn our body. So we've moved off the golf ball in essence here, maybe an inch, inch and a half or so. We need to allow the body, the upper body, to move dynamically back over to your lead side. So if I were loaded into my right side here, I wouldn't just wanna shift my hips. What that's gonna do is it's gonna create a lot of secondary axis tilt, which can in turn shallow your swing plane so if I were at the top of my swing and I lean my spine away, you can see that the shaft plane lays very flat. Also, the problem with just shifting your hips laterally is you're still bracing a ton of weight into your right side. Okay, you haven't moved or you haven't transferred that weight over to your lead side. So you need to allow the upper body to feel like it's moving. Now golfers or amateur golfers tend to feel like this is a big slide. This is not a slide by any means. You can allow your body to move if you've loaded your right side properly. Okay, so if I load here and I'm moving back over to the left side, we can allow things to move back over. We're still wanting the body to move. So if you've been battling or you've been seeing on camera that you're getting a lot of secondary axis tilt in transition, then these drills later in the video are gonna really help you out. Okay, so the second most common mistake that we see as a fault when working on downswing transition or transferring your weight properly over to your lead side is what we call a closed hip slide. Okay, so if you've noticed yourself on camera or maybe you've been working with an instructor through the swing review process and they've talked to you about this closed hip slide, I wanna go ahead and define what that means for those of you that don't know. So from a down the line perspective, when I'm loaded into my right side here, okay, for me to move my weight over to my left side, what a closed hip slide would look like is just kind of falling over to your left foot without your hips unwinding at all. So from a face-on perspective, 
you're loaded into this right side. Let me do this properly here. And then you would just fall over into that left side. That is a very, very difficult move to recover from because now as your weight shifts or falls over into that left foot, you have to remember your hands and arms are starting down very, very quickly. Now for you to be able to transfer the weight from the, the toes or the ball of your foot all the way back to your heel and your ankle joint here and then open your hips up before your hands and arms get down in the hitting area is very, very difficult to do. Also, you run the risk of when you're doing this closed hip slide of getting your body out in front of the golf shot. So again, the two common faults are is here A, is just shifting our pelvis and not allowing our torso to move back along with the lower half, or B, that closed hip slide. And I've got a great drill that's gonna help you overcome both of these swing faults, and it's gonna help you get into that perfect impact position, just like we had in part one of the video. Okay, so now let's get to work on a proper weight transfer in your golf swing so that you get a clear understanding of how you're gonna be moving properly from the top of the golf swing down into impact. And what I want you to think about is a baseball pitcher. How would a baseball pitcher start his move? Well, you would see him transfer his weight, okay? You would see him lift his lead leg up, and then you would see him make an external rotation of his lead leg. This is actually called internal hip rotation here. Okay, so you would see this move where he rotated his leg outward. Okay, so again, you'd see this move, then he would pivot his hips, and then he would fire his arm. Okay, so you can see how there's a chain of events that's being driven by the lower half down here. Now that same move is actually happening in the golf swing, believe it or not. Watch some of the longer hitters out there. You're gonna see their first move from the top of their golf swing down is you'll see their leg start to make that same sort of external rotation, or again, internal hip rotation here. So my point here is, is what I want you to do in order to be able to encompass this is just try throwing a ball first. Okay, pick your leg up, plant, Okay, and do this several reps over. You're gonna feel what it's like to use your legs in that same sense. Once you get more proficient at it, you're gonna feel like you're keeping your foot completely on the ground. You're gonna feel like you're still making that same move. Now, there's also another drill that you can encompass with this, and this is a drill that I put out in the hip pain video, the preventing hip pain video. So for those of you that have very little awareness of the leg muscles that we wanna to use to help pull yourself back over to your left side, now that's a really big word around rotary swing is push versus pull. We wanna be able to pull ourselves back over to that lead side. So for those of you that have very little awareness of those muscles, what I want you to do is I want you to take your lead leg, okay, your lead foot, and I want you to drag it on the ground, okay? I want you to do this maybe six or seven times here, okay? Drag it on the ground or your carpet at home, okay? And you're gonna to start to feel some muscles contract in your leg here. Once you start to feel those muscles, now what I want you to do is I want you to keep your weight on your right side and I want you to wind your hips up. Okay, you're gonna keep your foot kind of rolled in on your lead foot here, okay? It's gonna look a little goofy because I'm not in golf posture, okay? But you're gonna see now, I'm gonna keep this foot planted and I'm gonna pull myself over to my left side. Okay, so I've done the baseball motion a few times. Okay, I'm starting to feel what that's like. I've dragged my foot on the ground. Now I'm gonna get myself set up Okay, I'm gonna wind into my right leg here, okay? And now I'm gonna use those muscles in that throwing motion with my left leg to pull myself over. And because I'm focused on my lower body doing all the work, watch what my upper half does. See how my upper half is now moving dynamically back over to the lead side. If you use your leg muscles from the lead side of your body and you're pulling, your upper body will want to move with it. If you're pushing from the right side, or not using those muscles at all, that's when you're gonna run into those faults. So I want you to try this drill out. Let's go ahead and do it perfect now. Load up, I'm gonna make sure that my leg feels like it's externally rotating. Okay, and I'm gonna use those leg muscles, and then we're going right into neutral joint alignment where our knee, our hip, our ankle, and our shoulder are stacked right on top of each other. Once you become more proficient at this, start adding the golf club back to the mix. Okay, use an impact bag but flip the club over. You're gonna to work to the top of your swing. You're gonna use those leg muscles and you're gonna to start to feel yourself getting pulled into your lead side. So you're ready to post up and really ready to release. And you're gonna be in a great impact position with proper weight distribution and proper impact line.